Are you a busy woman who at times struggles with reducing your daily stress? Do you know that you need to slow down but do not know how? If you're looking at reducing your daily stress, you're in the right place. My name is Denise Eckert and I welcome you to the Calm Your Daily Stress podcast. I just love interviewing guests so they can share their stress reducing tips and techniques with you. Now, if you find this podcast helpful, please share it with someone who struggles with stress because lowering our stress will make us a better person, a happier partner, mom, friend, neighbor, etc. And the best part is happiness is contagious. Enjoy this episode. Hi there, it's Denise Eckert, and I'm the host of Calm Your Daily Stress. And I've decided to come on here because I have put together a document and I want to share it with you. So it's five simple steps to reduce your daily stress. Now, when you are feeling stressed, and we all know what that feels like when we start getting frustrated and we start making mistakes, whether our heart starts to race, we start to sweat. There's a lot of different symptoms when we are stressed out. The key is to recognize it. When we do feel that we're being stressed out, just stop. And that's the most important thing is just to stop, to take a pause. Because when we continue on the hamster wheel, we start making mistakes, we start getting frustrated, and it makes things worse. I do have a story that I've told a few times. I was making these curtains, and I'm one of these people that when I start a project, it's like boom, boom, boom until I'm finished. Whether I'm half asleep, my fingers are broken, my eyes can't focus, whatever, I am determined. I think it's the Taurus in me to finish it. That's it. I need it done. But you know what? If I would have walked away when I felt so tired and starting to get frustrated and even just taken a walk outside or taking the dog for a walk, the ending probably wouldn't have been as bad. But what ended up happening was the last panel of curtain I cut wrong. So therefore, it was the last piece of fabric. So I really screwed up things because I did not have any more fabric to create this last panel of curtain. So I had to redesign a couple things, but it was just, if I would have learned what I'm learning now or what I'm doing now, then a lot of these things would not have happened in my life. It is hard sometimes just to stop or to pause, but that's what makes the difference in our lives. And it doesn't have to be a long stop. You can just sit outside, feel the sun on your face, go for a walk. I mean, taking a walk is a little longer. I know when I had my dog, I would go for a walk. It would take me so much to get out the door because I was so busy and I was so involved in work. And once I got out there, I did not want to come back. (laughs) I'd be gone for an hour. But you know what? We need that. We need to take that time for ourselves. And there's other things we can do. We can take a five-minute breath work stop. Do a quick meditation. Listen to our favorite song. Oh, get up and dance to a song. There's so many things that we can do. Now, step two is to get clear on yourself. Really look at what makes you happy and what is important to you. And where do you want to go? So when you take on tasks or commitments, does that fall into those three categories? Does it make you happy? Is it important to you? And is it where you want to go? And getting this clarity really helps you make future decisions. So make a list, write it down. I actually have a vision board right on my desk and I look at it all the time. So when I do get a new task or commitment, or if there's a new course or something that it's going to take my time and energy, I look at that vision board. Now, does that fit in? And really ask yourself, does that fit in? Do I have that time and energy to take on another commitment at the moment. And sometimes you don't, but you still want to do it. So what other commitment can you let go? We keep piling things on our plate. Instead of taking something off our plate and putting something that is important to us on our plate, (laughs) I know my personality. I'm always adding more and adding more onto my plate and it doesn't benefit me at all. Now, step three, and I will have the link for this document anywhere you're watching or listening to this, is do a stress and energy inventory and take a look at where you're spending your time and your energy. And most importantly, keep a list of your stress triggers. 
what does cause that stress? So when we're doing things, when we're doing tasks or doing a commitment that does not align with us, a lot of times that causes frustration and causes us stress. So if we really look at step two and get clear on what we want, and then at step three, we take a look at where we are spending our time and energy. And if it's not something that's important to us and we're doing it, well, maybe there needs to be a change. I do have an inventory list, or you can keep track of it in your notebook and do this for about a week and keep track of things that are taking maybe 15 minutes or longer. And anytime you start feeling stress, it's just like when you go to a nutritionist, you keep that food diary so that you can figure out what is upsetting your stomach. And then after a week, or a few days, or whatever works for you, take a look at the different things you've added to your list. And now we got to start decluttering our time and our energy, our life, and take a good look at where you are spending that time and energy. Take a look at what triggered your stress. And then take the following steps. Number one, take out that big red pen. What can you delete? Like, what are you doing now that just does not align with you? What is stressing you out? What can you get rid of? Start taking more control of your time and energy because we all only have 24 hours in a day. And if we pack it to the point where it is stressing us out, the stress causes us to get frustrated, to start making mistakes. And for me, a lot of times I need to lie down, causes headaches causes stomach upset, causes health problems, relationship issues. A lot of times I found when I was stressed out and in burnout, I tended to take more on than I could handle. And I just did not have the energy to say, no, I can't do this right now. And creating those boundaries with people, it's protecting yourself. Saying no to the things that aren't important to you makes room for things that are important to us. And when we're living in stress, it's just not a good feeling. And if we continue living in stress, we end up getting sick. Stress causes burnout and burnout causes sickness. And I myself, I used to get uh, pneumonia all the time when I was a conference planner. About two weeks before the conference was on, my workload was incredible. Whether or not I hired people, I had people working with me. But it was just so much to do in such little time. And there was just no getting around it. And I really wish I would have had some relaxation practices, but I didn't. Because the only meditation I was aware of it was sitting in silence. And when you're feeling like that, there is no way I could sit in silence. If I sat in silence, I'd be, oh, I forgot to order the bus driver. Or I forgot to order this lunch. Or I forgot this travel arrangement. And... That's why I'm so grateful that I've become aware of a lot of different practices where it does not require silence of your mind. And it's, some of them are extremely effective. Now, the sec second thing you can do with this list is what can you delegate? What are you spending time and energy on that can be done by someone else? And I understand when you're starting a business, it's difficult to hire people right away. But a lot of times it could be even in your personal life. Someone in your household is going to the store. Well, maybe they can stop by and pick up something else or go to the library for you. A lot of times people are willing to help you, especially if you share with them that you are feeling stressed out because they don't know. A lot of times when we do things that aren't in our genius zone, it takes us a lot longer to do them. And I know for myself, I do hire out people to do this and that. I can do certain things, but if I'm only designing this once or twice a year, and then when I sit down with it again and I can't remember how to do it, it takes a lot longer. Rather than me hiring someone for a few dollars that will design it in five minutes because they are a genius at this. And for me, it leaves me my time and energy to do the things that are important to me. Once again, what's important to you? Now, the third thing is what can you do to handle the stress trigger differently? Some of the things you can do. I don't like doing accounting. I don't like doing invoicing or bookkeeping. 
So what I do is I do it at a certain time, whether I do it Monday mornings or Wednesday mornings, and I do it all at one time. I get it done. I get it over with, and then it's done. I'm not focusing my attention throughout the week on, oh, I got to do this or I got to do that because that distresses me out. And then it's just unproductive, in my opinion. Now, I love bundling things together. So I will do certain things on a day. Friday afternoons is a day for cleaning up my desk. It's putting things together. And what I highly, highly, highly recommend is if you have a large project, put it into bite-sized pieces. And then when you have your bite-sized pieces, do a bite at a time. And it's such a great feeling. You do a bite, you reward yourself, you take a break. And whether you take another bite size after that or whether you need to do something else. But when we immerse ourselves in these big projects, and I know I'm just developed a mobile app and it was a huge, huge project. I made a list of all the different things that I needed to complete. And I did it all in sticky notes on a piece of cardboard. And as I did one task at a time, I was able to check it off. I was able to rip it up. I was able to take it off the board. And it gives you that satisfaction that you got something done and you're working towards the greater project. Now, number five is ask for help. When we're stressed out, it can be hard to ask for help because for some reason, when we feel stressed and we need help, we feel like we failed. And in reality, if you're an overachiever or you're someone that just takes on too much, you've taken on too much. No one can do what you do unless you clone yourself five times over and to get it all done. And I know I do this to myself as well. And I always underestimate what t- what time things are going to take. And asking for help, it gives that sense of community as well. It's not failure. Failure is, is when you go into burnout and you get sick, you lie in bed, and you can't do anything. And you've jeopardized your health. That is failure, in my opinion. And I've put myself there so many times. I do have the free download that you can get wherever you're watching or listening to this because taking these extra little five steps will make a difference in your life. Now, just a gentle reminder to slow down and enjoy life and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to the Calm Your Daily Stress podcast. Have you ever wondered what your stress personality is? Are you a self-care goddess or a burnout queen? Well, you can find out by taking my free quiz. You just need to go to www.stressquiz.info to find out where you rank. Sending you love and peace, and I'll see you in the next episode.